Hi, it's Leaf, and today we're going back to my time at Sandrock. This time there won't be spoilers, there won't be speculations, just a couple of tips for beginners. Most of them are very basic and hardly original, but maybe somebody stumbles upon this video and finds it helpful. Mind you, this game is in early access, so things are very likely to change. So, without further ado, here's 10 things you should know before playing my time at Sandrock for the first time. Lower your game speed especially if it's your first playthrough. Your machines will not work faster because their timers are linked with the game speed, but walking isn't, and that's precisely why you want to lower that speed. Exploring and even losing your way every now and then, which is normal if you don't really know the map yet, may cause you to lose a lot of precious time. To be honest, I never play on regular speed, even though I know the map very well by now, because traveling may take a while, and time is key. Go to sleep before midnight. If you do, you'll get rather useful buffs that will last for the entire next day. If you don't, you'll get charming panda eyes instead. You can cover the dark circles with a bit of concealer that you can purchase at the general store, but the buffs won't come back until you get enough sleep. Cutting down trees around Sandrock is strongly discouraged. You shouldn't do it, but you can, provided your axe is strong enough. When you cut down your first tree, burgess will show up and inform you it's illegal, but it's fairly easy to talk your way out of this by saying you didn't know. However, if he catches you again, you will lose 100 goals and 25 friendship points. You can cut down anything you like if he's not around, but let's assume you want to play by the rules. If so, keep away from the tall cacti as well. They are also considered trees. The small round green ones are safe to harvest, and the small round green ones that seem to move a bit too much are actually animals and they're gonna shoot spikes at you if you get too close. So be careful. Regardless of the rules, you will need a fair amount of wood for your projects. Before getting a better axe that allows you to harvest dead trees, you will need to harvest wood piles, small cacti, bushes and tumbleweed. It does require a fair amount of running around, but it should give you just enough wood to get by. And remember that wood scrap, just like any other type of scrap, needs to be processed in the recycler before it can actually become useful. Speaking of the recycler, get more than one machine of each type as soon as you can and keep them running, especially recyclers and furnaces. Also, use dregs as your primary source of fuel. If you run out of dregs, use crystals. Don't use wood, it's way too precious. If you keep your recyclers on, not only will you always have important components, but you won't easily run out of dregs, as they are a guaranteed byproduct of recycling almost any type of scrap. Gather as many resources as you can. In fact, before you go to sleep, use up all your stamina. If you have some time left in the evening, go, gather some stone or wood or scrap anything, it will always come in handy. Or be like me and waste terrifying amounts of stamina. Alas. I don't always practice what I preach. Speaking of stamina, basically every activity related to obtaining resources consumes stamina. Using your axe and pick hammer, even harvesting plants. Once your stamina drops to zero, you can't do certain things anymore. And technically there are ways to regenerate it, but frankly not very effective, especially early in the game. Some foods, for example, regenerate stamina, but it takes a lot of eating to bring it up to decent levels. In my personal opinion, it's rarely worth it, unless you really, really need to finish something that very day. Most edible plants that you can harvest on your own, like sand dates and cactus fruit, actually require a similar amount or even more energy to gather than they regenerate. Dried dates and jerky are a bit better, especially if you get them as a gift. Sitting down regenerates about one point of stamina per three to four in-game minutes, so it's also mostly useless, unless you have absolutely nothing better to do, for example, if you're waiting for your machines to finish production. There is also food at the Blue Moon Saloon. Two types, actually. You can order a full feast, which is fairly cheap, but it doesn't regenerate that much, and you can only do it twice a day. Or you can buy some takeaway, which is more expensive, but you can purchase as many items as there are in stock, so long as you can afford them. Uh, and you can certainly eat all of them at once. To make food more effective, you should put some points in stamina regeneration while leveling up. I guess for the very early game, my main advice is don't worry too much about regenerating your stamina. 
If you run out, just walk around, talk to people, play cards with them. Making friends in this game is as valuable as working, and even though it doesn't need stamina, it does need time. So use it! From time to time, check your map and look out for the exclamation marks. They mark cutscenes that will activate when you approach, or new quests. However, some quests are only active for a limited time and they will forever disappear if you don't activate them quickly enough. So it's good to pay attention to those exclamation marks. My Time at Sandrock is a type of game where you can talk to people and of course make friends. As you talk to the townspeople for the first time ever, most of them will have a welcome gift for you, so make sure you have enough space in your inventory. Also, after you've introduced yourself to someone, make sure to talk to them again. Because talking to them once per day will result in you getting one point of friendship, just by talking. However, talking to them for the very first time won't give you any friendship points, unless it's one of the very rare cases when someone has a quest for you as soon as you meet them, and you can get more points right away. But you still can talk to them afterwards and get that one regular point if you want to. There are exceptions, however. Dr. Fang won't start warming up to you until you do his personal quests, of which he'll inform you in a letter. Also, at this point in Early Access, he doesn't accept any gifts. Introducing yourself to Cooper also takes a bit longer because damn this man likes to talk. Relatively early in the game, Cooper will want you to rebuild a broken part of his fence. When you talk to him about it, don't fall asleep. Trust me. It seems like there is no fall damage in this game. Normally you can parkour and jump from rooftops to your heart's content, but as soon as you leave the town's limits, all bets are off. If you fall from a great height, you will get hurt and you can potentially die. It's especially easy to test while mining in the ruins, so be careful and make good use of your jetpack. And use the lift. And that's it for today. Have fun playing the game, thanks a lot for watching, and I see you in the next video. Take care.